All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be continuing our 25 Days of Winds of Winter, and we are going to be talking about Cersei in today's video. We just got done doing Jamie yesterday, so if you didn't see that video, I would watch that video before I did this one. Uh, that one's kind of a prelude to this one almost. Uh, I think the two characters are very much intertwined. Um, also, we are getting close to 2,000 subscribers, so if you guys have any questions for a QA, I'll be doing for 2,000 subscribers on a live stream. Uh, also be doing like my ancestry, like DNA stuff. Um, so you guys can figure out where I'm from. Cause I don't even know. But yeah, if you have any type of questions, song about some fire questions related to me as a person, uh, the channel, leave those down in the comments and I will get to those on the live stream. And yeah, before we get into the video, if you guys like to like subscribe and comment, please do it up channel grow people that might like this content as well. And let's get into it. So Cersei, Cersei's in quite a predicament. So we end off Cersei where she pretty much is stripped of all of her power. She has nothing left. And then all of a sudden, there's a little wrinkle at the end of Dance of Dragons where Varys ends up killing Kevin Lannister, ends up killing Pycelle. So this is more or less, in my opinion, going to allow Cersei to continue taking over power of the Lannister uh, house. And especially over Tommen. Because the thing was that L Kevin Lannister more or less had been taking over. He'd been ruling pretty well. I've done a video on Kevin Lannister before about, he's, I think, one of the most underrated characters in Song of and Fire and in the Lannister household as a whole. And I think this is going to put Cersei on edge because Cersei is going to think that the, the Tyrells did this or something like that, which is a very stupid conclusion when you really think about it because Kevin Lannister is actually giving the Tyrells much more than he would like to like he is more or less trying to make the Tyrells really happy because of all the shit Cersei's done so Cersei is going to be kind of perplexed by that she has the faith against her she's going to be backed into a corner almost where I think she will have power but she's going to be in a city that doesn't really like her in a situation where young Gr Griff is raising an army and it already has the Golden Company and could possibly get the Dornish as well. The Sand Snakes be probably be in her castle, right? You have Varys, who she doesn't even know is doing things at this moment, but he will be doing things to help young Griff take King's Landing. Everything is pointing towards Cersei will not survive this book. And what I think is going to be the thing that kind of throws her over the edge because we know Cersei as a person is not a good person, but we know that she very much cares about her children. She's very similar to Catelyn in that way. And we see Catelyn as a character as her children die and become prisoners, basically like Sansa. She loses more and more of her sanity and her ability to make decisions. And that's not saying that Catelyn became insane by the end. Cause that's, that's not true, but if we would have seen Catelyn without Rob, without her turning to Stoneheart, she would have been a very cruel person, which is what she becomes with Lady Stoneheart. Um, so I think here the idea is that I think when Cersei loses her children, because I think Tom and Marcella are destined to die, they pose too many problems when you look at succession and stuff like that. And also, I just think it's probably going to be their time to die. Um, Cersei's prophecy, um, her prophecy that's given to her by Maggie the Frog, says that her children will die before her. So I think it all lines up in that regard that Marcella and Tommen have to die one way or another. I think that'll be because of the Sand Snakes. The Sand Snakes have kind of positioned themselves to be next to Tommen and Marcella, especially Marcella. Maybe Tommen, it's by Young Griff killing him. Who knows? But what I think ends up happening here is that I think most likely Tommen dies before Young Griff takes the city. I think Tommen dies maybe in the buildup, maybe there's like a siege outside, Young Griff's forces are there, and Tommen is killed. Whether that's by a Sand Snake or an Assassin, Varus, one of these ways. And I think it's going to drive Cersei off the deep end. I, I think that will be the last nail in the coffin for Cersei's sanity as a whole, and will be the last thing that pushes her over the edge of just not get really even more than she already is now not giving a shit about anybody outside of herself and her children. And I think that's going to prompt her to use any wildfire that's been left over from Eris. So I think where this draws a parallel to, and it will get to Jamie's storyline. Like I talked about in yesterday's video is that Jamie 
I think shows up to King's Landing maybe before or maybe right at the very beginning of the sack of King's Landing for the second time because I think young Griff is going to find that the gates are almost open to him to where it's not really a battle it's more like the first sack of the Kings of King's Landing with Tywin I think it's going to be a very good parallel to Robert's Rebellion and how it ended um, with children having to die and all of these other things. Now, granted, Tom and Marcel are older um, than Rhaegar and Elia's children, but that would be kind of the parallel. And then there's a sack and also Cersei going mad queen. Everything is kind of set up to be a perfect parallel of the ending of Robert's Rebellion. And what I think here, what we see is Jamie somehow gets to Cersei before she starts doing the wildfire stuff, trying to reason with her, trying to have her not go down this path. Because I think we need to see one more interaction between Cersei and Jaime. I think that is where the story probably will go. And I think that makes the most sense for the two. Uh, looking at the prophecy um, that is given to by her, given to Cersei, that she will die by the Valonqar, which could be a younger brother, which could either be Jamie or Tyrion. I think it's Jamie. Just Jamie makes more sense. He's closer to where Cersei is right now. Tyrion does not lo- does not look like he'll be in Westeros, uh, except maybe by the end of Winds of Winter at the earliest. Um, I think Jamie is set up to be the character there that ends up killing Cersei. Um, and I think another thing that would kind of fit that arc is Jamie again having to kill the Mad King or Queen, trying to kill innocent people um, with wildfire. I, I think that is what is going to happen. That Cersei finds some sort of wildfire that has been left over from the Mad King, and she gets desperate. She sees the people have turned on her. The gates have opened. Young Griff is being heralded as a hero, and is sacking the city more or less. And she takes vengeance. She's seen her children die, and she's had enough. And it's much more of a intriguing turn for Cersei because you can understand from her point of view why she would feel like she needs to go the wildfire route where she's felt betrayed by all the people. Um, nothing's gone right for her. Um, she, she is someone that blames other people more than herself. And it would be the perfect culmination that, that Jamie kills her um, ending her as the Mad Queen, more or less. And what I think here would be interesting is I think Jamie also dies. I think Jamie also ends up dying in this sack. I think because Cersei and Jamie, it's been said so many times that they are going to die. They came into the world together, they will leave this world together. That Jamie either has been stabbed already, um, trying to get to Cersei during this sack, kind of like we saw with the Euron stuff in Season 8, which was terrible, but in a different way. Or maybe the mountain is near Cersei, and Jaime kind of like walks up to her and, and is reasoning with her, and it doesn't pose a threat, and then he kills her, and that prompts the mountain to then kill Jaime, and they both die. So that would be how I would predict Jamie's arc. I don't think Jamie will live past Winds of Winter, um, unless the young Griff King's Landing plot doesn't happen until Dream of Spring. Um, I think that pro- that plot probably happens by the very end of Winds of Winter. So I think, to me, it makes logical sense that Jamie dies here. I don't know why George would have it as young Griff loses this battle. I don't understand what the point of bringing him into the story would be then. I've always saw young Griff's conflict and Daenerys's conflict as what is kind of being put on main stage that Cersei has kind of destroyed her own house and destroyed her son's rule at this point that Cersei winning to me wouldn't really feel right. in in my opinion, um, because George is someone that's very much about, If you make bad choices, they come to bite you in the ass, and those choices will lead to your death, and Cersei's made a number of those, um, and she will be paying the price for it in Winds of Winter. So, thank you guys all for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed our talk on Cersei. Tomorrow, we will be talking about Rickon. So... This is a video I've wanted to kind of redo for a while. The first Rickon video I actually ended up doing, um... I feel like I didn't have a good grasp of Rickon's character, and I had a really good discussion with a lot of you guys in those comments. It's a very old video at this point. It's probably at least eight months old. Um, 
I'm interested to redo that and look at my own thoughts and my own and how they have changed over time with having a YouTube channel, communicating with you guys a lot. So let me know what you guys think about Cersei and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye guys.